Welcome once again to another edition of the Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. Of course, I'm your host, Rolling Bubba Grimes, and we have, again, a very special show for you this afternoon. And we're going to be talking to a young man who is on a crusade against man. bullying in America. His name is Glenn Sutton, and he hails from the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, right now, by way of North Carolina, we'll get into right. that in a little more details in a few. However, you sit tight. We'll be back real soon with Rolling Grimes. Not just sports and entertainment show reporting to you live once again from my, the state of Maryland with my good friend Glenn Sutton. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Grounds, not just sports and entertainment show. In this particular segment is going to be a little bit more humbling for me than it normally is. Of course, I'm going, to, I'm going to get a little animated because that's what I do. <laughs> However, this young man that I have with me this evening was actually a member of my neighborhood growing up. Uh, he was uh, an outstanding young man, uh, tremendous character, conducted himself with class, uh, grew up in a family that we adored. Very much lived right across the street from him. Used to throw footballs and basketballs, and and uh, it helped get keep the big boys <laughs> off up when they wanted to jump on him. And, and then he became a uh, all metropolitan football player, uh, all metropolitan area football player uh, at uh, Anacostia High School. Uh, he was a cornerback and uh, had quite a career. Uh, since he finished and moved on to other things, we'll fill you fill you in on what he's been doing since then. Uh, he has decided to dedicate a portion of his life to youth in America. But one of the things he has going on, in addition to his contribution to education, the field of education, he also was very serious about sending an anti-bullying message, which is something that I'm still grappling with because I both got bullied and was a bully when I was <laughs> in school. So I understand the value of a little tough love. But uh, but we're moving in, in a different direction as a society. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for my good friend and brother, Mr. Glenn Sutton. That's right, all right. Good to have you, man. Right. Glenn B. You just love those delayed claps. <laughs> Glenn, man, welcome home. Hey, welcome home, man. I'm glad to be here. Look, we're going to jump right into it. Okay. All right. What is it and why is it are you sending out this anti-bullying message? Well, I, I will say this, it all started at Susan Junior High School. Susan Junior High School. Susan Junior High School, that's in uh, Washington, D.C. And with me, I was bullied. Matter of fact, the guy who bullied me, he lived, he lived in, 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 kind of like in our neighborhood. I'm not going to tell his name, it's not important. But this thing I know his name. <laughs> this thing went on and on. And so um, I didn't get the opportunity to tell my mom or dad because I was just kind of embarrassed. Because there are a lot of people out there that probably feel embarrassed. Males, males feel embarrassed. And I was embarrassed until one day I told my father. And my father said, well, the, the thing you need to do is stand up and go fight. And so that's what I did. But I lost. And that's why I try to tell, to, to tell students now, do not take bully in your own hands. Uh, as you know, people bring guns, knives, and those are dangerous weapons. So now, uh, my wife and I, we have developed a program called, called, <laughs> called Stop Bullying. And so we have a theatrical uh, presentation presentation that's very animated, um, very serious, and we really get into it. Matter of fact, what we do, the audience, mm. the audience sit there and they watch it, but we kind of include the audience. So it's uh, very emotional, very emotional. You might see some laughter and some, some tears, but uh, we, our message 
to all the, the victim, the bystanders, and the bully is to uh, please tell somebody. And if you are the bully, if you are the bully, you need to stop because you're damaging a lot of people's lives, a lot of people's dreams. And that's what my whole motto, my motto been there for almost 30, about 30 years, is follow your dreams. And my dreams almost been altered. So, uh, so that's why I'm passionate. Yeah, and I'm going to go there. I'm not going to play devil's advocate mm -hmm. per se, but I'm going to reach back into a time that we grew up. Right. Basically, basically, what we said when, you, when we were growing up, if somebody was trying to chump you. Right. They were trying to take your lunch money, they were right. trying to take your woman, whatever it was. Right. All right? They were trying to s steal your spirit. Right. They were trying to take your position, whatever, as we know right now, just in the situation that's going on in the NFL right now. But the thing is, this has been going on since the beginning of time. Right. Where, and, and it happens in every species. Right. Every species of animals, every animal within the kingdom has oh, this. Yeah. It has, has this. Somebody. You know, as, as the king of the jungle, That's right. and everybody else better bow until right. you, you know, long live the the king is dead, long live the king. Exactly. So everybody bows until somebody knocks the king off the throne. That's right. So the animal instinct in me responds to threats and conflict with a right. fight or flight. Right. In addition to that, the animal instinct also, when I smell blood, whether it's near the goal line, mm -hmm. whether it's near the rim, you know, whether it's in business, right. when I smell fear, I smell blood. Right. I'm going after it, and I'm going to succeed in what I need to do. Now, what happens is if I don't participate in that kind of conflict early on, then all of a sudden I find myself in Afghanistan or Iraq. Right. How then do I get myself up to do that kind of battle? Or if I'm playing football or whatever else. So if I don't go to situa through situations where I have to deal with that kind of conflict, right. where someone is an aggressor, how do I learn how to deal with an aggressor? Well, you know, well, and, and, well, and that's a good question. And a lot of times, what we do is we try to take matters in our own hand. And when you do, and when you do that, things start to happen. People start bringing, like, like I heard I said, like weapons and stuff, stuff like that. You have to leave that to some, leave that to people that's with them, that have some kind of like authority. Uh, learning that, but that's uh, only if you if right. you're in a position where you can. If right. It, if it's right in your face right now. Right. And and you're in the corner. And you have no way, no other way to get out of that. Right, corner. that's not bullying. What do you do? Right, hold, oh, oh, that's not bullying. That's not like self defense. Bullying, bullying is when you, is when a person has is a, it's an aggressive when he or she. And that, that she, that she I now, she now, she now, she now. It was she back then. I had a couple. Uh, of she now. Had a couple of she's whooping you, bullies back <laughs> in the day. When you intimidate a person and put fear inside of them, and, and it's systematic and consistent exactly. and ongoing. Exactly. Exactly. So it's now, not an immediate threat. Oh no, 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 no. Like uh, because you mentioned you mentioned earlier about football. I said that, that, that's a little bit different. That's something that you're trying to like a goal. You're trying to you're trying to go at, which is kind of I call it kind of structure. Bully is a little bit different. People when they, when they bully, early say they take but things you, from you. They they put fear inside of you. They talk and even name call because I I never forget these names. They call me dumb, fat, ugly, and stupid. And the reason why they call me stupid because I couldn't read that well. And so back in uh, at Kimball, mm -hmm. back back then, you know, if you if you didn't read on grade level, right, you, didn't, you didn't get the awards. Awards, and then also what they do, they put you in that grade level. Yeah. So that means if you're a sixth grader, uh, you'll be in the third grade. You'll be in the third grade reading class. Right. And and so and so that so everybody they're walking past and and they're laughing. And so and, and that continued. And that's why that's why I kind of I, I hated it, but I kind of deal with it. But then as I I got older, so I got older. Um, it started affecting me even more, so that's why. In what way did it affect you more as you got older? Self esteem. Okay, let's talk about that. Self esteem. Right. Even, even, even going on like job interview. Yeah. See, a lot of time when those when you bully, those scars are still there. Gotcha. Oh, they're still there. Now, you, the, the, the problem is that you know you're older, but you still have those scars, and sometimes uh, scars of self esteem, scars of you know, like I was got one time I never forget I was at Walmart in Lumberton, North Carolina. And it was a young lady, she was bullied over 30 years ago. And she saw the guy. As a matter of fact, she said, she said, Mr. Sutton, I saw the guy last week. And the first thing that he say, said to her was, I'm sorry. But it was it was just it was just so funny. Over 30 years passed. And, and that's the first thing that he said. And so those wounds are still there. You know, and when people call you dumb, stupid, fat, ugly, though, you know, that stuff hurt. It hurt. It hurts. Especially for a woman. You call a woman fat and see what happens. Come on, man. <laughs> you see what happened? On, I'm serious. And the reason, Dude. I'm serious. <laughs> and the reason why I think it had gotten so serious, even the time we were growing, we were bad. This thing had, this thing had hit, hit, hit these major schools. I mean, major, major high schools. 
Uh, and so that's why it's getting this this uh, the attention. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, I, you know, we're 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 going through a time where obviously information travels very quickly. Yes. So if a youngster in a particular state has a situation and is upset about being bullied and hurts himself or hurts someone else, right. and of course, you know, storied uh, issues surrounding the Columbine massacres and things like that where they say, well, these students were being teased, chumped, bullied, whatever, and they and they basically got into their own little enclave. Right. And and then they lost their minds. Right. But see, but, but, but see what happened is, see, see people, See bystanders. There are people called bystanders. Bystanders is almost worse than the bully. You know why? Because they sit there and watch it. Well, I mean, I get that. Yeah. But how do you jump in? I mean, what? You know, I mean, now, I mean, probably you and I were, you and I were school. Uh, you probably jump in. But now, you know, they got they got structured things that schools have right now. Tell somebody. And and most time people they won't be called uh, a snitch. Right. Man, ain't been a snitch. Oh, no, that, now you bring in other pressure on yourself. Right, and so what you right, and so what you do, what you do, you can go to your your principal, your teacher, and do something. You know, kind of, I mean, kind of like confidentiality. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. But what happened is that was shooting from from the car, car by that can be all avoided. But see, no one, no one wants to get involved until it happened. That's why you see all the media. They had media people might say, "Hey, have you noticed anything?" Yes, I knew something. They were being bullied, and I think that what they need to do. Is getting involved. If you see somebody being bullied, I mean, at least say something. So it's teased. Yes. The same as being bullied now. Huh? Yes. Teased. Matter of fact, you can't even leave, you can't even leave people out. Or like you can't leave people out on purpose on the game. That's that's, that's not a bully. Like say, fans, if you want to like choose one two people and you want to choose them, choose her out of it. Oh, I ain't fair. Yeah. That's, that's so I mean, when we pick sides and I don't pick you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Man. I'm not saying that because one person could have no better skills. I'm saying if you do it on purpose. Okay. Doing so saying eliminate somebody. Exactly. Like, right. Okay. So like when we were growing up, and even to this day, folks join on each other. Oh yeah, that's bullying, man. You can't do that. I can't join on. No. That. I cannot cut the dozens. Especially, I'm telling you something. Especially in the workplace. I'm not sure, man. I can handle. Can't do that. You can't even joke. I'm sorry. Why you, not? Because what happened is because some part, some people could be you know they could look at it being offended. I understand, I know. but I mean, look, I mean. You can walk down the street in a neon suit, right. and somebody can be offended. Right. So, I mean, folks can get offended by anything. My only question is, from that standpoint, is not so much the, 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 the program, the mission that you're on, right. but how do we balance that out as a society? Because if we don't laugh with each other, right. laugh at each other, right. uh, rustle each other, right. if we don't do certain things, then as, as a species, right. we begin to lose the ability to correlate with one another. I agree with that. I agree. But right thing right now, things are getting so sensitive um, in our job, in the home. Uh, I'm mean, everywhere. You have to be. I'm not saying you can't do that, but you have to be real careful. Uh, time, time just it just it just changes, and certain things that we have to do. Because if you say something out the way, you know it could be a lawsuit. And so that so right now uh, in my school when, in North Carolina, we're part all over. Bully is one issue, you know what I'm saying? There are other issues in school of, of, of an inbully, everybody know sure. that. But it's just, right now, that's just a hot issue right now. Okay. Um, so, so the best thing, the best thing that your uh, kids or parents or even uh, principal do is make sure you keep it in the forefront of the mind. The reason why, because football, basketball, athletics, other stuff will come, other stuff will bully your mission out of it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it, you know. Even, uh, uh, the month of October, they considered it as cancer, some cancer for the women, mm -hmm. breast cancer. But they put bully, um, bully in the same month. So now you have something that is serious as breast cancer, and 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 the bully campaign is in the same month. So one, so one going one gonna, one going to bully each other out. Usually, we usually know your mom have cancer, or she have cancer. Well, I mean, cancer has a lot of, lot of right lot of breast cancer, cancer right? Breast, breast cancer. cancer. You have you have the athlete wearing the pain. Nothing's yeah, gonna, nothing's going to bump that up. Right, right, and so that's what that's what happened. Um, and because I noticed it even the commercial, everything I seen on TV was a uh, cancer, a little bullying, but not but not much until somebody brings a gun to school and guess what happened? That's on TV. Oh yeah, I seen that. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks, look, we're going to take a quick station break. We're going to come back in a few minutes after we pay some bills. We're going to close out Mr. Glenn Sutton, and he's going to tell you more about his current program, 
where it's at and where it's going. We'll be back shortly. Sit tight. Welcome back, Rolling Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show, your host Rolling Bubba Grimes, your effervescent chocolate troglodyte, but my man, Mr. Glenn Sutton. Glenn, tell us the name of your anti-bullying campaign again. It's called Stop Bullying. And uh, we just I mean, excited. That, that's real hard to remember. I know, I know. But actually, we, we, we had another name, but it had some kind of controversy. Gotcha. So we, uh, we just put it plain. Uh, one guy told me to keep it simple. Keep it simple, yeah, T. Right. What, what was your other name? Like, hit him again? Hit him again. That was, hey, that's the name. <laughs> I said that. Hey, that was now, the how, how did you get an anti bullying message out of hit him again? I know you had a story. Right. What's up? You, you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe. Uh, you wouldn't believe. That uh, was a great hook? Yes. I, I remember all the pain that the bully did me. Mm -hmm. It was called Boom. I. What? Hit him again. Boom. It went church. hit me in my chest. I was the pain that I felt. What was it was so I was so loud and it hit him again with the bystanders. So I said, you know what? I took those four words and went downstairs in my little studio and found some music, right? And I played it and man, it went it went crazy. Now I was, we got twenty we had twenty four hundred kids at our school, twenty four hundred, mm -hmm. and they played it on our like a little TV program, and it was it was I mean they went. I, I'm, I'm telling so you, they went, so they, they went, huh? So then why change it? Well, that's what I said. I mean, I'm telling you something. This thing went, I mean, when I say wow, it it went crazy. Okay. And so there's always some, there's always somebody that's uh, in authority that said, oh, I'm a sudden, you may give me the wrong message. Even though I know the message, it was more like a hook. And because it, it's funny, but because they did that, it made it, it made it uh, even grow. Do you know, um, I always got a grandma for that. You know that you know the grandmas now they they are in teachers. Uh, so I got a letter. I came, I almost came, I came out to the the semifinals with that song, with that one song. So listen, for all you rappers out there, you have to market. You have to market. I mean, the lyrics good, but you have to market. This thing was unbelievable. It's so unbelievable. when you tell somebody they have to market, what the heck does market in Facebook, uh, YouTube? But on, oh, but but the the best market is you. You have to believe in what you do. Man, you can't be everywhere. I know you. So how do you market? I mean, you have to be. I'm sorry. You have to be excited about what you're doing. And I and I and I think that that was one. You know, enthusiasm. I mean, it is contagious. And so what happened? I said, what happened? They play that. They play that thing one time. I mean. Okay, so now you move to a stop bullying. So how do you put? Do you still use the the record? Was it a song? Yeah. Yes. Every well, time, the yeah, stop bullying, but right. You go there and do your thing in the middle, right? Wild, hit them again. Right, and I tell, and actually, I, and what I do is, I, I, I tell them which, uh, I tell them, you know, what's, um, what each word means, okay. and then, but, but it's somebody, man, that them kids, they just go, they go, they go crazy. Because it's like easy to remember. Remember, no, it's it, it's and so, uh, <laughs> so that's the thing that we try to do. We use it, we only use it as a hook, but the message that we have. Well, see, tell, tell me about the message. The message is that we try to tell every person if you're being bullied, I mean say, I mean say something. And if you're if you're bystander, say something. And if you're a bully, stop. And we do it into like a, a theatrical sense. We hold everybody accountable. The victim, the bystanders, and the bully. We show the bully, you know, we show the bully, you know, all that he's doing. Because sometimes a bully might think it's just for, it's it's just fun. It's, but, a, it's amusement. Right, but, yeah. but it's not. The bystander said, "Well, you it know." It is to the bully. Right. I, I know. Right. I know. Right. And so what happened is we show the we show the bully, you know, all that he's doing. I mean, all that he's he, he's doing. We show the, him the impact of exactly. We sh man, we we really show him the bystander. We show we show them. We show them all what they're not doing. Mm -hmm. uh, even by even by you even by you sitting there and watching. That's an that's amusement. See. You two, I mean, if you if you see a fight now, people now they pull up their cell phone and, and they record yeah, everybody watching and watching. I mean, it, I mean, it becomes number one hit. We hold the bystanders accountable. So if you watch somebody being bullied, you just as responsible. Okay, so now here's the thing: you talked about in modern day society, mm -hmm. you have the entrance of guns and other weapons. Yes. So I'm a bystander. I see right. someone being bullied. Right. I step in. No. Now the gun in the. It's on you. Right. Right. That's why. That's why we tell people: don't take knives you don't have. You don't have to tell somebody. There's always some kind of dude around. I mean, there's, there's always around. I mean, they say this now, but it is. But I think sometimes because it's not us, 
because it's not us, we don't want to get involved. It, it, so that's the thing that we try to do, try to tell our students. Well, once you get involved, it becomes part of you. Exactly. Because as soon as I, as a bystander, tells someone an authority that someone's being bullied, right. now the bully has not only the victim, right. but he also now has the bystander that has entered into his world. We're not ready. Not ready. If it's, if it's, done, if it's done correctly, it should be confidential. It should be. Now, unless the principal or teacher, whatever, tell who, who told, but it should be confidential. Because if not, you put that bystander, you know, kind of at risk. No, you don't kind of. You do. Huh? That the bystander not enters into the right. Place. Exactly. If you, right. Yeah. And that, and that's what we try to tell principal. I mean, but you know, if if you know, we've heard situations where members of the mob, right, you know, off some whack somebody, right, and everybody in in the People in the neighborhood witnessed it. Right. But if they speak up, right. uh, the mob comes after them. Exactly. So that kind of thing trickles all the way down. Right. To you know. Well, you went to a mob. You went I mean, to a mob. You know I'm saying it, it trickles all the way. Down. The same right. kind of application. Right. Trickles down to two siblings. Right. Who are five or six years old, and a six-year-old breaks something and tells the five-year-old, "Don't you tell, tell mama, mama, or I'm gonna hurt you." Right. And then. And then, and then the seven-year-old, you know, says, "Well, I'm going to tell." Right. And then the six-year-old now spends the rest of their life trying to terrorize the seven-year-old. Right. So, as a basic instinct. Right. That's a good example too. You know. Yeah. There's a sister. There's a sister. And you've had that in yeah, your whole family. Right. Matter, I know your brother. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's funny you said that. I was doing the show, and after the show, a young lady came to me. She said, she said "Sir, uh, there's one area, one area that you didn't cover." I said, "What area I didn't cover?" Sibling bullying. Exactly. She, well, that's, when she, when that's she said, where the first bullying right. starts. Right. When she said, I said, I said, baby, I am so sorry. You are right. You know, I, I, I didn't talk about that. But then I had a lady, a lady at my uh, church. She was bullied by her brother for years. But uh, and even now, I mean, even now she is. She's, she's dealing with a lot of scars. But, but you, um, where do we find you again? Stop bullying and what? Um, bystanders. You can call me on www. Stop bullying and a n d bystanders dot com. On there, you have my website. We can locate me, and we just we just excited that we that we got this project in our heart. You know? So let me ask you this: What is your long term vision? Um, I don't want you to tell all your trades. Right. Tickets, but play. What is this? Yeah. Well, well, long term, I have. Uh, matter of fact, I don't, I don't think you probably know this part. You know, you know, I'm a playwright. Before there was a Tyler Perry, no, I saw some of you did. Before there was Tyler Perry, there was a Glenn Sack. All the thing that he's doing, I did. I sold my stuff, at, uh, and I'm gonna tell you something. I am good. Just God, <laughs> God I'm very good at it. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, my next project. Is gonna probably be a, a, a play. I'm gonna do a play, maybe gospel play, or maybe just an average play. But it, it's gonna be good. And then from there, and bullying is gonna be one of the things. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. And then we gonna. Do uh, we're gonna do a movie? We're gonna do a movie, mm -hmm. and so uh, that's our plan. But right now, we, we we're going to the schools because we believe that that's the area that we need to hit. Are you, are you finding a lot of resistance in getting into the schools? Yes, because have you? Uh, there is a, a movie out it's called The Bully, and it's good. I, I love it. It's real sad. It's real good. God gets bully, uh, but it doesn't bring change uh, because the movie don't talk to you. You know. A lot of time, a lot of time we see sad movies. We go, man, that's sad. And then, and then we go, let me give some ice yeah, 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 yeah. Let me some ice cream, and some, <laughs> some skittles. <laughs> and that's what we do, man. Right. I say the movie is is good. I think the school need to see that. Then after that, you need to bring me in. Do the dialogue. Yeah, you need to bring me in, and I can hold every person. Uh, you know, they'll be accountable. You know, from the bully, from the even principals and all that, they'll hold accountable. And you know there are three ways to stop bullying. Here's it, really. I don't have a 12-step program. Here's three ways. It's me, you, and us. That's three ways. Another way. Me, you, and us. You do that, bully stop. See, <laughs> man, what the heck did you just say? How did bully stop for me, you, and us? It's like a song. I know. <laughs> me and he, but him too, but. How does bullying stop saying, from me and you? Me, me, right, me, if you if you're part of me, if you're part of the school, me mean to me 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 personal responsibility. Right, me. Okay. You'll be the other people. And okay. then and then us is a group a group thing. That's how you stop. Okay, so like basically like nine hundred people can stop one bully. 
Because right. when you talk about me, you and us, right. you're talking about a community. Exactly, right. It grows. Like exactly. Oh, okay. So it's saying? not so much stopping the, the individual bullies. Right. You're talking about creating a culture. Exactly. Where bullying Get everybody has, involved. No, has yeah. no value. At my school, at my school, uh, well, I own them, them, everybody right now, they, it's a, um, it's, it's been a, what's called it? Uh, I would say a spirit of everybody. The conscious, a conscious of being a conscious. Even kids start playing. Like Miss Sutton, uh, he, he's bullying me. But even if they play, at least they saying it. Okay. They, they, they. You know what I'm saying? They get it out there, and so, and so it kind of makes it. It keeps it away. It keep. I tell you what it is. It keeps it fresh. Okay. And that's what I do. I keeps it fresh. <laughs> I'm fresh. sorry. I keep it. <laughs> keeps it fresh. Hey, so. I keep Alright, it's Fresh Daddy over here. It's my man. Glenn Sutton. Glenn, Glenn Sutton. And, uh, Tomorrow, this last song we had to do is Susan. We're going to turn it out. In Southern Maryland. Boom. Uh, he's, he's, ah, he's what? Ready, he's, Hit him again. He's, he's getting ready to uh, roll over to uh, Susan. Philip, Philip John Susan Junior High, I think it's called. Yes. Uh, over in Southeast Washington, D.C., where we grew up. And he's going to bring his anti-bullying message there and hopefully uh, be joined by Stacey Lattisaw and some other folks. Who hail from this area and want to uh, uh, want to participate in a positive movement for change, folks? Once again, your main man here, Roland Bubba Grimes, saying goodbye from the Roland Grimes, not just sports and entertainment show. We'll see you next time. Good night and God bless. <laughs>